What is up everyone, my name's Al from GamesRip, and today we're going to be discussing Quake 3 in 2021 for the Dreamcast. Is it still worth playing it on the Dreamcast in 2021? My answer is yes. Right, let's grab that copy of Quake 3. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Ah, <laughs> there it is. Let's pick it up. And let's just take a quick look at this. This is such a great game. It's at their best Quake 3. Now, as you can see, all the options, many different options here, including VGA out and mouse and keyboard support. Pop it in the console. Let's pop the lid down and let's go. Now, this is the setup we've got here today. We're going to be using the Dreamcast keyboard and mouse. It's just the best way. Let's actually take a look at the rest of the setup. So this is the setup. So, bit of a convoluted setup here. So this is the capture device we're using. This is literally like £14 from eBay. Very good, works well. Um, so we've got HDMI out, which is obviously going to a, a converter, which is going VGA into the screen. Now obviously if you've got a uh, HD screen, although this is HD, but, the way to get audio during this, I'm going to plug directly into there as well, so that converts to audio at the same time. And here we've got HDMI in, which obviously runs to the back, where we're using the Keiko HDMI um, connection for the Sega Dreamcast. So that's the setup. Let's actually take a look at the gameplay. Here we go, so headphones on and boom, let's do this. That's right, like I said, we're playing Quake 3 here in 2021. The setup is keyboard and mouse, and we're obviously running this through HDMI straight off of the, essentially cheating the VGA into HDMI. Let's put it that way anyway. And let's take a look at Quake 3 Arena. Like I said, best way to play is keyboard and mouse. Now you can obviously use the, you know, the Dreamcast gamepad if you want to, but I wouldn't advise that. Now obviously you're gonna have to keep it plugged in in one of the ports anyway, because that will obviously supply your VMU support. Uh, so yeah, let's crack on. As you can see, it starts very, very much like the PC version. So if you know the PC version, then yeah, you're going to know what you're getting into here because this is a very, very close port, but with slightly different variation. Now, obviously, level setup is slightly different, although very, very similar. But as you're about to see, the game looks very, very similar to the PC version, almost so you'd probably think it is the PC version I'm playing. Welcome to Quake 3 Arena. Now, before we go any further, you're going to want to make sure you've got the keyboard and mouse set up correctly, because if you haven't, then it's just not going to work, it's not going to feel right. The key to playing this with a keyboard and mouse is make sure you've got the correct setup, otherwise, what's the point in using keyboard and mouse? I'm just going to put it out there, make sure you do it correctly before you get in there. Now, Quake 3 is obviously set up to kind of ease you in. Each game, obviously, as a single player, is giving you a bot to go against you, and you've obviously got to rack up a certain amount of kills. Now, like I said, difficulty ranges at the beginning from pretty damn easy, and then obviously the further and further and further you progress, it does get harder. But, you know, doesn't that just make sense? Now, the Dreamcast version was obviously ported over by Raster. That's right, if you don't know who Raster are, I've got to be fair, most people don't. But notably, they did the port of Quake 2. That's right, Quake 2, working on the N64, they handled that production, which, as you might actually know, is actually a pretty decent port. They obviously done this, Quake 3 Arena, to the Dreamcast. And they also did the PS2 version of Return to Castle Wolfenstein. You know, the one called Return to Castle Wolfenstein, Operation Resurrection. That's right, they also handled that. So they're pretty notable for doing some pretty, pretty decent ports. Now, obviously, you can clearly see and hear that this really sounds great and looks absolutely fantastic. Like I said, I'm playing this via HDMI, and I'd say if you haven't already got HDMI set up on your Dreamcast, 
go and do it. You absolutely, you know, you won't regret it. Obviously, it doesn't work with all games, but it does work perfectly with Quake 3 with very little, if any, lag at all. Now, obviously, you're probably going to say to me, why on earth would I still want to play Quake 3, and especially on the Dreamcast, in 2021? Just hold on to that thought a sec. Anyway, you've seen enough gameplay from me. Let's move over to It's Much More right now, and he'll explain why playing online today is the best way to play Quake 3 and how to do it. Thank you for that great introduction, Al. Yes, I am James from It's Much More, and I'm going to talk to you about the Dreamcast side of things when it comes to Quake 3 Arena. So now that you've sorted out your PC version of the game to have the same version that allows you to join us, Dreamcast users online, all you need to do is have yourself a Sega Dreamcast console. So yeah, you have the PAL version of the game or the NTSC version of the game, both allow you to join PC and Mac users online. So you got yourself a broadband adapter, whether that be the Japanese or the American NTSC version of the broadband adapter, they are supported online. Or if you have yourself a Dream Pi, that is a Raspberry Pi image, and that's called Dream Pi, that allows you to kind of trick the dial-up connection for the Dreamcast and play other games online for the Sega Dreamcast, which also include the likes of Worms World Party, Fantasy Star Online, Monaco Grand Prix Online, just to name a few. But in this video, we're talking about Quake 3 Arena. So the first thing to do when playing Quake 3 Arena on the Dreamcast is to set up your player. So to do this, you need to go into the Setup Menu option. So if you haven't done so already, you can load a saved player that you've actually created in the VMU section. So like I've made earlier, here's my setup, here's my created player. And in the player settings, you can see the player name, the color I'm using, and the icon, the player icon, and the crosshair as well. So you can change that if you like. Back to the main menu now. In the controls, you can change the controls if you like, if you want to use keyboard, mouse, or just redefine them. So here we are, back to the main menu. Let's go on Internet Game. So once you have your Dream Pi set up and your broadband adapter set up to play this online, this is how you'd connect online using the PAL Dreamcast version. It normally takes around 30 seconds to connect because it is dialing at the moment, but it is kind of fake dialing because you're using the Dream Pi image or the broadband adapter to connect online. And you'll see the Dreamcast image at the end is the blue version, the blue swirl version, because that is the PAL version of the game. And if it is the NTSC version of the game, it would be the orange swirl, but as you can see in a moment. This will be the blue power version. We are connected. You can choose each of those users. It doesn't make any difference at all. But the only important part is to use the password. The password for this is, let me just see if I can remember it. It's Dreamcast. So something that you can't really forget. So it takes a little while to check the password. And here we are, there are the server lists. So as you can see, these are all the Dreamcast servers because they have the limit of four. You can type in the IP address as well, or just check to see if there's any bots playing. It shows you the speed on the right hand side of the game, and also shows you a little bit more information of each of the games. So there we go, lots of bots playing against each other on here. You can have team deathmatch, tournament, capture the flag, to name a few. So now that we've got the map loading. Doesn't take too long to load for the Dreamcast and now we're in the game. Dreamcast UK here. So this is the Dreamcast version of the game. You can play online versus PC and Mac users as well. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and we will return back to Al from Games Room. So as you can see, there are many, many reasons why to go and grab yourself a Sega Dreamcast, a keyboard and mouse, and also a Dream Pie or a broadband adapter 
to enable you to play Quake 3 today on the Sega Dreamcast in 2021. It's still awesome. It's still Quake 3 at its core and a real novel. Actually, in fact, it's not novel at all. The best way to play Quake 3 on the Dreamcast in 2021. Thanks for watching, guys. You can now support the channel on patreon.com forward slash gamesrip, as well as remember to like, comment, and subscribe.